First things first, Rory, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Okay. Very pleased well, to be here. Uh, well, it's nice to have you. <laughs> what I want to start with is, is the beginning. Do you remember the first album you ever bought? Yeah, it was... Um, what was it? Uh, Sunburnt and Paranoid by Skunk and Nancy. Okay. And what, why this album? Um, I was at school and um, I was I, a friend of mine was playing it and uh, I just love her voice. Okay. I think Skin's beautiful voice and uh, you know I was into metal at the time, okay. so it was kind of my introduction to that side of things. Yeah. This is quite interesting. You were into metal at that time. Yeah, yeah, bands like Tool and stuff like that. You know. Were you into music from a very early age? Yeah, I, I kind of had no choice because my parents both were uh, very into music. We didn't really have TV. Okay. Uh, we had a record player and and um, we played music. And my, both my parents play music, guitar and sing. So it's a very musical household. So it was a family thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and what kind of music did they play? Um, so my dad is like... John Lee Hooker, okay. Muddy Waters, right. and, and then my mum more kind of Joni Mitchell, Bob Dylan, and uh, Fairport Convention, so folk kind of and jazz and you know stuff like that. And then, uh, well, you started with uh, Skunk and Anti and, and, and the more yeah, I mean, guitar. Yeah, I mean, I think early on I just liked what my parents liked. Right. And then I sort of I like uh, my first the things that I were into was hip hop, metal and uh, jungle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then I think I think it was hip hop that kind of drew you into into the performing yeah, yeah. side of it. So it so what did, did attract you to it? Um, well I saw um, I don't know if you get it here but Jules Holland mm, sure. is, have a TV yeah. show in yeah. the UK and um, I remember seeing Roots Maneuver and um, that really really got me interested in, in hip hop, you know, because he was from the UK mm. and uh, I didn't know that people in the UK made hip hop until I saw Roots Maneuver. So, because before I only knew Wu Tang and sure. uh, Master Ace and The Roots and stuff like that. Were you already writing lyrics and, and at this time? Yeah, yeah. At school, we, okay. we you used to write lyrics, you know, rap lyrics. Yeah. What about or uh, just teenage? Just things? stupid teenage stuff, <laughs> okay. you know. Yeah, okay. smoking weed, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> girls. So. When, when did it become something, something more than, than just having fun in school? Um, I think when I realized that I could sing, because I always wanted to be a rapper, mm -hmm. but I think because I didn't think I was very good at rapping. I mean... Why not? I think because so many of my people around me, mm -hmm. I mean, that are around in the hip hop sort of circuit in the UK, was so good. Right. I felt like I wasn't as good, okay. but then I realized I could sing and my dad, um, you know, persuaded me to perform and okay. we used to go to open mic, you know, jam sessions sure. and um, some whiskey and, uh, you know, I had confidence to perform just like one time right. and just one time is enough. Sure. Yeah. But you, you say you realized that you could sing. How, how did you come across? Because like you say, you started rapping and playing yeah. hip hop. So. But I always uh, sung along to okay. records I was listening to. Sure. So I never had any uh, music lessons. Mm -hmm. I never had anyone teach me how to sing. I just learned from Muddy Waters. Right, right. So, you know, the way he sung was the way I tried to sing, you know, so. And, and so once, well, that, that, that was a turning point then, because, uh, yeah. you, you know, you can sing. So, so once that was established, where did you go from there? Because you, were you still very much into the hip hop? Yeah, very much into hip hop, but um, yeah. at the time I kind of, I started to perform just acoustically okay. and tried to write my own kind of blues and mm -hmm. kind of traditional sounding songs kind of to the blues genre. But um, it was when I formed a, a group with some people in Brighton called Rum Committee, right. and it was um, singing over hip hop beats and stuff, you know, more more free kind of thing. Did you take to writing in that style uh, as quickly as you did to, to writing verses? And yeah, I think so, yeah. What, what did you write about uh, um, in the room? Just, 
just just general life stuff okay. really you know people heartbreak <laughs> okay and stuff like that you know in that sense is it a is it is it very personal what what you write down yeah it's very personal yeah i like not just from me but from friends and people's mm. stories okay you know just to talk to them and see what's going on in your life mm -hmm. and you know tell me and then i can get that piece of gold from you right you know Sure, sure. Because sometimes the stuff that's happening on your own life isn't that interesting, <laughs> you know? Especially when you're on tour and stuff, you're like, what am I going to write about just being on the road, you know? And you talk to other people and their experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get that perspective. Yeah, because, uh, well, yeah, you've released a couple of EPs, but now yeah. you're uh, working on your album? Yeah, it's done now, pretty oh, much. Oh, it's done? Yeah. Okay. But, but like you say, um, things are going well so you're touring around uh, how do you kind of balance touring and then, then that creative part as you say um, well it's kind of worked at a really good time now because I've just finished the record mm. um, well 80% okay. probably okay. Um, so and now we're starting to, to tour festivals and, and a tour so mm. it's come at a good time because I don't have to balance too much okay. you know and am I right in saying you, you mentioned the live shows am I right in saying that, that uh, you were at first hesitant to go on stage? Yeah, I was very um, scared of looking at people in the eye. Okay. Yeah, because I used to turn around okay. so that people couldn't see my face, but you know, it took a while for me to get over that, but now I'm over it, it's, okay. it's, it's good. W was there a moment or, 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 or like a bit in time where you thought, okay, now I, I feel comfortable? And yeah, I think so. I think I was, I was performing somewhere and um, it was one of the first times a girl was singing my lyrics okay. back to me and um, it was a really personal song and I turned around and I saw her and she was crying and I was like, this is a beautiful moment. Like, sure. So I want to look at people, I want to see the reaction, you know. And, and that, as you start out uh, when you're a kid and you start writing music, that's not something you have in your mind that people will, will sing, sing yeah, back you to you. You never realise that that's going to happen, yeah. So, so what, was, what did that feel like? What was that like to have people kind of know what you were doing and, and be involved in what you yeah, were doing? Yeah, it's beautiful. I, like, I, I, I never thought that was going to happen. So um, to me, that's one of the best things about performing live mm -hmm. is affecting people emotionally. Right. Because you, you never think that about, about that side of things, you know, mm -hmm. and the way you make people feel by singing a certain lyric or, you know, having, having that feeling in your music. Is there maybe a story you can share, that, a reaction that you had? On, uh, yeah, I like, I wrote this song called A No Mother. It's, it's a really personal song about a friend of mine who had a problem with his daughter. He couldn't see his daughter, basically. Right. And um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a really emotional song, but I performed in my hometown and the guy that I wrote the song about came to the gig mm -hmm. and uh, he was just like, and I could okay. see him and I, while I was singing the song. I could see him in the okay. crowd, and uh, his how upset he was by it, but how happy at the same time, you know. And that's. Uh, did he know? Uh, yeah. Did he know that you wrote he knew, the song? Yeah, okay. He knew. Because, like you say, uh, you take also stories from from other yeah. people. Do, do you talk uh, yeah. about this with these people? Yeah, yeah, okay. I do. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd feel bad if I didn't. Sure. I think. Maybe if I did it and then they didn't realize, that might be a bit of a shock. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, then uh, on, uh, on the upcoming record, uh, one of the first singles uh, is Human. Yes. Can you take me through the, the process of how that track came together? Yeah, so Human was um, a, a guy called Jamie Hartman. He's mm -hmm. a friend of mine and we write songs together. Okay. And uh, we, we went to a studio in Brixton called The Dairy. Mm -hmm. And um, a very cool studio. And uh, we, we had this idea, just melody idea, but um, I think how I was feeling at the time, it was, the song was, was about um, kind of admitting that you don't have the answers all the mm, time. Sure. You know, there's a line that we came up with was, because uh, I'm, I'm no prophet or messiah, you know, should look somewhere else because yeah. I don't have the answers. So it's just an admission to that. Sure, I wrote that particular line down yeah. and, and what I thought about, was there a certain moment where, where people were asking something of you or, and you kind of had to I think say... it just came from a, a conversation, okay. you know, where someone was asking my opinion on their situation and I was like, I don't know why you're asking me because, <laughs> sure. you, you know, you should go and consult the oracle or whatever <laughs> you want to do, but don't ask me, I don't have the answers. But in that sense, is, 
does your music does it have for you a, a certain ca cathartic element in in a, in a sense that you kind of get uh, get these uh, emotions out and, and kind of form a better understanding of, of yeah, your thoughts? Yeah, totally. It helps you deal with it. Right. Yeah, for sure. I think that's probably true with everybody. Okay. Yeah. And um, well, you say it's eighty percent done uh, yeah. thereabouts. What what is the last twenty percent? Well, what what do you still need to well, do? Well, I think um, the the most difficult thing about the coming to this point is um, having to take things off the album. Sure, sure. And because there's only say twelve tracks. Mm -hmm. You know, gone are the days where people do twenty track albums. So sure, we've sure, got, sure. We've got it's, you know twelve tracks, and there's only that much. So sometimes you think I really want that song on, but then you've got to swap it with something else. Mm -hmm. So that's why I okay. say 80% because I'm still undecided on whether this one makes the record or this one makes the record. So it in keeps that, me up at night. <laughs> fair enough. In that sense, would you say the album will be a, a collection of the 10, 12 best songs that you've yeah, written? Or, for sure. Yeah, okay, so, so it's not sure. necessarily about how they uh, interact with each other? Yeah, it's about the songs. Okay. Yeah, for me. And then, then what? What was your criteria, so to say? Because, uh, like I said, you, you've had a couple of EPs. Uh, will, will some of the tracks from the EPs uh, be on the album? Maybe one. Okay. Yeah, I think. And then, then do you know? Uh, well, you probably won't say, but do you know which track? Well, there's one definite song. Okay. It's called Life and Her Yet. Okay. It's from Wall's EP. That's definitely going to be on the album. Is it, what, how come? Because uh, I, I wrote it about my grand, my grandma. Okay. It's. Uh, it's another really personal song, but yeah, it means a lot to me and my family, so sure. it's, it's going to stay on there. Was it easy for you, especially at the start, to talk about these personal things and have kind of, kind of everybody know about you? No, it's okay. not easy. I still find it okay. not so easy now, but it's, you know, it's, you have to be open with stuff, I think. Sure. Yeah. And then, what do your parents make of it, of, of what you're talking about? Ah, oh, they love it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my family have always been pretty supportive, you know. Okay. Um, I think, at first, my mum was like, you still got to get a proper job. Okay. You need a proper job. But, um, and then she came to a show where there was like a thousand people. Mm. And she was like, okay, maybe not. You know, you're doing You'll be okay. all right now. <laughs> You'll be all right. So. And then, mus musically then, because you do take from, from a lot of different genres. It's very eclectic what you yeah. do. So, so was it important to you? Because like you say, you, your, your dad had that blues influence, folk in, yeah. influence from your mother, so your own hip hop influence. Yeah. So is it important to, to be that diverse? Yeah, for me, I, I always wanted to make an album that was, um, that sounded very different, you know, mm -hmm. and, and not, not have one specific sound. You know, because some people, and I understand when you want to make an album that has one sound, sure. but that's not what I want to do. And I wanted to, I wanted to surprise people, you know, and hear something next and go, wow, that doesn't sound like the same as the last track. And and in that sense, because people have heard uh, some songs from you, was it in the back of your mind what what people would expect from from the album? Did you think about that while writing? It? I didn't think about that at all. You know, I think it's probably good not to. Just do you do your thing. You know? Sure. And then th this is one question I, I always like to ask because, well, w what is your definition of success? Where, where do you, th when uh, will the album be a success for you? Oh, I don't know. I don't like to think of things. I don't like to think of things as having a goal in the future, Fair. like having one thing to look forward mm -hmm. to. Like I think it's better to live right where you are. So right now, I'm really happy because I'm playing to people. Right. And I hope when the album comes out, I'll still be happy and I'll still be playing to people, hopefully more people. But yeah, I'll just be happy when I'm still on stage. Okay. So I just like to play to people. Okay. Final question then, do you already have an album title? No, this is another thing that keeps me up at night. <laughs> okay. So yeah, okay. I've had a few names floating around, but I, yeah, I'm still undecided. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. No problem at all, it's a pleasure.